Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining me, Yahya Ibrahim, on Peace TV as we discover how Tawheed builds character. Today we're going to look at the important characteristic of taqwa, piety, genuineness, and awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there really isn't one word to define this concept of taqwa that is relevant in the English language. There's a multitude of words. But we will need to study this concept of taqwa from the classic Arabic grammar, also from the meanings that are derived from it in the Qur'an and how it's used, and from the life action of the Prophet Muhammad Now surely, for any believer, anyone who knows anything about Islam, they've heard this word before, taqwa, piety. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ Those who are arrogant and obstinate and disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or unruly and unrighteous in their behavior, some of them, when they are told, have taqwa of Allah, have consciousness of God, have an awareness of your place in society and in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watching over you, have the taqwa of Allah, اتَّقِلَّهُ his sense of strength and righteousness overwhelms him. His sense of pride within himself takes him away from the truth. His place can only be the depths of the fire of Jahannam. So taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something we all must nurture. And it's a characteristic of the righteous. In many places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the believers as al-muttaqeen or al-muttaqoon or the people of taqwa, the people who have developed piety. In fact, one of the most noble aims of the month of Ramadan and its fasting is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about al-siyam, kutiba alaykum al-siyam kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Fasting has been prescribed and written and ordained upon you as it was upon the nations that came before you perhaps by the end of your fast and perhaps through the trial of fasting you will come to an appreciation and a higher sense of awareness and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the greatest of those who possessed taqwa. He was the greatest of those who had consciousness and awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this was something he nurtured in his Sahaba. So we will look today insha'Allah at this great characteristic of belief, this great characteristic of the people of faith, this characteristic of taqwa. So we will look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu extract benefits from it and show how he impressed upon the believers, those who lived with him at the time and those who would come after him including ourselves and insha'Allah those who will live beyond our years, how a sense of piety, a sense of righteousness, of awareness of Allah and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is necessary to show and to flourish within our belief and our system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now taqwa is a very important word. It comes from the root wiqaya, to protect or to shelter. Now the usage of the word taqwa is really significant. It's a way of the Prophet ﷺ showing us what the usage and the meaning of the word as it relates to our life. So in an authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, الصوم جنة يستجن العبد بها من النار Fasting is a protection that a person protects himself with it from the fire. Now that word of protection and shielding is very significant. But that same concept is also referred to as taqwa, to protect yourself, to hide, to shelter, to make a barrier between yourself and others, and other things that could be of harm. You find the Prophet ﷺ using it in that context in numerous places, and his Sahaba عليهم, would understand it. In one of the most famous hadith, he says, as we have shown about protection from the fire, he says, Protect yourself from the fire even if it's through the donation of half of a date in charity. Wow! The equation that the Prophet ﷺ utilizes between fasting, which is an elevated form of leading us to taqwa, 
And the concept of charitableness as being a part of piety and taqwa is significant. Those two characteristics of being a fasting person who is not in need of food and drink all the time, who's pious and turns to Allah in fasting, and one who is generous with his money and his effort leads to that generous state of piety and righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about al-muttaqoon in numerous places in the Quran. One of the most moving places is Surah Al Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Be hurry and earnest in your race towards Allah's forgiveness and gardens of paradise is that of the heavens and the earth. Prepared for those who have taqwa. Who are they? الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ They are those who give in charity when in prosperity or adversity. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ they are also those who hold back their anger and those who pardon the mistakes of others. In another section of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the people of taqwa are those who when they commit fahisha, a major sin, an open sin, a sin that is appreciated by others, as being sinful, rebellious behavior before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhakarullah, their immediate return to Allah is through His remembrance. Immediately after committing a major error, Allah defines a person of piety as being capable of sin and error, even in the most major form. They remember Allah. They remember that they have someone to answer to, that Allah is watching over them that Allah is knowledgeable of their actions and is seeking their forgiveness. Dhakarullah, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ And immediately begin to ask forgiveness for their sins that they are not thinking of. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And who can pardon them and forgive their errors but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And equally one of the traits of the people of taqwa is that they do not continue in their sinful behavior once it has become apparent. That is a sign of righteousness. And that is a sign of faith in Allah. That is a sign of reliance upon Allah, of tawheed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you regret when you disobey them. And as such, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that Allah loves for us to come back to Him because it is an awareness of him, it is taqwa. The Prophet ﷺ was very firm with the Sahaba, with the necessity of piety, with the need to develop a consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal. How can we define taqwa? What does the word mean? Taqwa simply means an awareness of what is around you and the dangers that are near. It means to be aware of what the dangers are and preparing a defense against them. The Prophet ﷺ taught this to his companions. And one of the most famous examples is that of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu wa arda. In the authentic hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, Abi Huraira is asked about taqwa. Ma hiya taqwa? So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says to the man, Ya hadha, asalakta tariqan dha shawkim fi yawm min al-ayyam. Young man who's asking me, have you walked in a road that was full of thorns and things that can harm your feet and clothing? Everyone's experienced this. You drop a glass, things that are of dangerous nature around you. You don't have your slippers on. You're fearful that if you step somewhere, you're going to cut your foot. Something around you that is dangerous as you're proceeding in your day-to-day -day routine. The man said, yes, of course, I've walked in roads or in places where there's dangerous things that I had to be conscious of. So Abu Huraira told him, what did you do? The man said, well, tafaqatu tariq, I looked around me to see where I'm going to put my foot. I didn't want to put my foot in a place that would harm me or that I will receive pain from it. So Abu Huraira struck the man in his chest, hit him in his chest, and he said, that taqwa, that is piety. That is consciousness of Allah. That is awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how we need to live our life. That we're aware that this worldly life is full of deception and beauty. It's full of temptation and sin. It's full of happiness and joy, but full of danger and destruction. 
it is full of things that can lead us away from the path of Allah. And we need to be aware of them. And we need to be on guard. It's like a boxer in the middle of the ring. Someone who's in a fight. He knows someone's trying to hurt him. If he doesn't prepare a defense, he's the one who's foolish, not the one who's attacked him. So it's important for us to learn this linguistic perspective of the word taqwa. We also need to dwell on the spiritual perspective. Talq ibn Habib, one of the tabi'een, one of the people who came after the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he was a very eloquent man. And someone asked him, can you define for us what is taqwa? He said, at taqwa hiya, taqwa is. And this is the standard opinion given by the scholars of Al-Islam. At taqwa hiya, an ta'amala bi ta'atillah. An ta'amala fi ta'atillah. That you live your life obeying Allah. Ala nur min Allah. Using the light that you have received from Allah. The great Quran and the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Tarju thawab Allah. Hoping for a reward from Allah. Wa hiya an tatruka ma'asiyat Allah. And it is to abandon sinning in the way of Allah. Ala nur min Allah. Because you have been given the guidance and the light from Allah. The sunnah and the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu And the words of Allah. Allah, because you are fearful of the punishment of Allah. That is the classic definition of taqwa. That is an important thing for us to develop within ourselves as believers. After a short break, please join us again. <laughs> This is your brother in Islam, Mamdouh Muhammad. You're watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al najjar Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Tonight at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We've been talking about taqwa 
And we've been talking about how Tawheed builds that characteristic in us, having piety. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I really want you to think. Try to remember all the faces and all the people that you've met in your life. And I want you to try to remember an individual who struck you just by how you met them, him or her, just by the life that they lived, by what you knew of them, by the embraces and the encounters that you had with them. Who can you, within your heart now, recount as being a person that you felt genuineness, true piety and God consciousness and awareness in them? It's rare and hard to find a person of taqwa, a person that you assess and that you have this fondness for and this love for. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah loves those who are pious and those who have taqwa. And because of the love of Allah for an individual, because of their piety, Allah brings down that love and acceptance for that person on earth. In the authentic hadith narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهَ عَبْدًا نَادَى جِبْرِيلٍ when Allah loves an individual, he calls the angel Gabriel, Jibreel, and says to him, Ya Jibreel, inni uhibbu fulanan fa'ahibbu. Jibreel, I come to love this man, this woman. I love this individual. Allah loves an individual. So I order you, Jibreel, to love that individual as well. So Jibreel loves that man or woman. And then Allah orders Jibreel, Nadi fi ahli sama, ya ahli sama. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبُّوا O inhabitants of the heavens, O angels of Allah, Allah loves this person. You are commanded to love them. حَتَّى تُوضَعَ الْقَبُولُ لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ Until Allah makes acceptance well and wide for that individual on the earth. SubhanAllah, the love of Allah comes from your piety, from your nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from your awareness of Allah, that causes the angels to love you and that causes mankind to love you, even if they oppose you. I will tell you of my, one of the experiences I've had in meeting a person of taqwa. I was visiting, alhamdulillah, Mecca al-Mukarramah for Umrah. Many years back, when I was a little bit younger, I used to go every year for the summer months to try and do Umrah and meet and study with some of the teachers of Islam. And I had never met a sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen, al-Imam, rahmatullahi alayhi. May Allah have mercy upon him. I didn't know what he looked like, never seen a picture of him, had no inclination of who this man was. And as I entered to make my tawaf, for the very first moment in entering the Kaaba to make my umrah at that moment, something in my heart told me, you know, look to your left over there, that's Sheikh Uthaymeen. And I'd never met him and I saw this man in short stature with a beautiful white flowing beard who was just about to begin his tawaf and as soon as the people saw him they recognized him and everyone ran towards him maybe a thousand two thousand people as Sheikh Muhammad Salih al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi was a person nashhadu lahu bit taqwa we know and we testify on his behalf that he was a person of piety from his works, from his research, from his da'wah, from his ability to change the people and to change their hearts and to lead them to the way of the Prophet ﷺ by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being used by Allah as an instrument to lead people to the guidance, not out of his own volition, but out of his righteousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would open doors and would open hearts towards the truth of Islam. And knowing him and seeing him, you feel that connection that this is a man of piety. This is a man of weight in society. Irrespective of whether you are in agreement of his fiqh principles or not, you recognize the man as a man of righteous conduct. Now that image is stuck with me and stuck in my mind for the rest of my life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise up in the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam people of righteousness and people of piety. And do not feel dissuaded, my dear brother, my dear sister, by thinking that I mean that the people of taqwa have to be scholars in Islam alone. La, no, my dear brother, my dear sister. I wish to give you another example, a personal one. My grandmother, rahmatullahi alayha, a lady who was illiterate, could not read and write, who was very simple. The only chapters from the Quran that she knew were the ones that she led her prayers with, al-Fatiha, and قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ أَنْ آيَةُ الْكُرْسِ فَحَسْبُ That's it. 
That's all she knew from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she had memorized. And yet this lady once, as I was coming in to visit her, we were visiting Egypt, I entered and I sat next to her, and she said in her Arabic, Egyptian Arabic, she says, You think you people, because you've learned the Quran, because you've studied Islam, I was just coming back from a lesson, that you guys are a little bit better than me? And I said, no, no, and I felt a little bit shy because it almost seemed that within my heart I would take pity and I would tell her, Ya Teta, would you like to learn more of the Quran? I can teach you a little bit more. She says, what I know, Alhamdulillah, I know. And she says, Yabni Ijlis, my son, sit down. My son, for the last 40 years, I have not missed a single prayer, Allahu Akbar. And in the last 11 years of her life, she was in a wheelchair. She wasn't able to move. She would wheel herself to the restroom, make her wudu, wheel herself back, and she would do her salah as soon as the adhan was made. She says, I raised 11 children, 10 boys, one after another, and the final one, a young daughter. All of them graduated from university. All of them learned to read and write. All of them knew how to study. When the time of the war between Egypt and Israel was on and we couldn't turn on the lights, I would sit with a candle with them and pretend I knew how to read to make sure that they did their homework and did their studies. And we look at our life and we look at the luxuries that we have today and we compare what is true piety and righteousness between ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not about the scholar of Islam alone, or the illiterate lady who I am familiar with, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon her and accept from her her deeds. Taqwa is a sense of being. It is love for Allah. It is a love for his messenger. It is a love for our faith. It transcends the amount of knowledge we know, but it comes into the practice of what we know. And as such, this characteristic of a believer, the one who's measured, the one who's careful with each footstep he places, the one who's really conscious of his duties to Allah, the one who's really careful of what she says, the one who's conscious of their whole way, may, mode of life, who's fearful to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any condition other than Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and these verses were always recited by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he spoke to people in a lecture or in public. He would say from Surah Ali Imran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqati O you who believe, O you who have come to faith, have the taqwa of Allah in the measure and to the capacity that He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, deserves of you. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not leave this worldly life in any condition other than voluntary submission to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is an essential. It is a call from Allah, a call from His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Tawheed builds that inner feeling, builds that characteristic of piety, builds that characteristic of love, hope, and fear of Allah. That is taqwa. Loving Allah, hoping in Allah's mercy, and fearing Allah. You cannot just simply love Allah and say, oh, I'm not going to worry, Allah loves me, so, and I love Allah, so everything will be fine and not be fearful of Allah. You have to love Allah, but you have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You also have to have hope in Allah. You can't just be one of those who's fearing, oh, I'm going to be punished, the hellfire, the hellfire, Jahannam as sair and be fearful, fearful, fearful of Allah, and not have hope in Allah's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful with us. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah has bound himself has confined for himself, has determined, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for himself, that he will treat us with mercy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that Allah's mercy to us, inna rahmatullahi wasa'a kulla shay, as Allah tells us in the Quran. The mercy of Allah enveloped all things. As is narrated in Sahih Muslim, a man who committed all of the sins known to humanity. As he is about to die and return to Allah, he says to his sins, إِذَا أَنَا مِتْ فَحَرِّقُونِي Burn my body. وَذَرُونِي فِي الْرِيحِ وَفِي الْمَاءِ Throw some of me in the wind, some of me in the water, some of me in the desert. 
لئن قدر علي ربي لعذبني عذابا لا يعذبه احدا من العالمين because if Allah takes my ashes and builds me back together and questions me he will punish me in a way that none can be punished so Allah will bring him back on the day of judgment and asks him what made you do this and the man shall say because i feared you O oh Allah i had that fear of you O oh Allah Allah shall say ghafartu laka dhalik i forgive it for you in that fear of Allah, we get hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are hopeful for the mercy of Allah. We are loving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are fearing of Allah azza wa jal. Those three elements are the basis of taqwa. Love Allah with all your heart. Love Allah with your deeds and your statements and your actions. Fear Allah with all your heart, with all your might. Be fearful of Allah. نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ O Muhammad Sallallahu inform my slaves that I am the most forgiving, the most merciful. وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ Tell them also that my punishment is the most severe of punishment. Have love for Allah, have fear of Allah and have hope. And know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is ever merciful, ever loving, ever wanting for you to return to Him in Tawbah. I thank you for joining me for another episode of Tawheed Builds Character. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe. To him belong the heavens and the earth.